This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I want to welcome you to the realm of the miraculous. The assignment that I have received from our Heavenly Father is to prepare his sons and daughters for the coming move of the Holy Spirit. Yes, there is a present glory, but there is a coming glory. And so my assignment from the Father is to get you and I ready. And so in order to do this, let me share something that happened when I was pastoring. Now I pastor pastors and I travel and I minister, but when I was traveling, there was a woman of God who wanted to participate in the visitation of the Lord's spirit. And so she was praying very, very intensely. And because she wanted the instruction of heaven, she prays and she goes to bed one night and she has a vision. I want to remind you of Acts chapter 2, verse 17, where God speaks through the apostle Peter, who's referring to the prophet Joel, who says, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And so she goes to bed one night, and she finds herself in church, and the Lord Jesus comes into the church, and he literally walks up to her. And this is what he says. I want from you three things. And these are the three things that I want for everyone. Please hear me now, because I'm talking about how to prepare for the coming move of God and how to please Jesus and the Father. He said, number one, bring me the fruit of repentance. Now, this is a great scripture. This is a great revelation because when you look at the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 8, you see the forerunner. You see John the Baptist. Now, notice John the Baptist's responsibility is to release the revelation of the word to prepare people for the coming move of God, Jesus himself. And so the Father's assignment to me with you right now is to prepare you for an appearance of Jesus himself in your life and in your ministry like never before. Here's John's words. He says, bring fruit in keeping with repentance. So let's start there. What is the Greek meaning of the word repentance? The Greek word is metanoi. It means to think, to rethink, to think again. It means to make a decision. Now, the Hebrew word for repentance is actually, well, Hebrew being a, a verb language, um, um, you know, it's, it's a verb language. It's, it's a language that you do something. It's a picturesque language. Repentance means to actually turn around. Okay. So you, when you put the, the Hebrew with the Greek, the old covenant with the new covenant, and you tie them together, it means that you change your mind and you change your behavior or your way of life. So Jesus is saying, Bring me the fruit of repentance. In other words, when you receive the revelation of God's word by the Holy Spirit, you change your mind and you change your way of life to conform to the teaching and the revelation of Jesus. Now, this is very clear because you see in the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 19, where the apostle Peter is preaching, and this is what he says. He says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out because there's a time of refreshing that's literally coming from the presence of the Lord. So you have the word repentance, but then there's the word be converted. Now the Greek word for converted is the word epistrapo. And by the way, it's a military word. It is a word that means to make an about face. It means to literally turn around. And so what this woman's vision speaks to is the revelation of the word. So it's a true vision and it's accurate. The second thing I want to speak to this about, this whole issue of repentance, is that I would have at one of my spiritual son's house in Monroe, Louisiana, and um, you know he was at work and I was just there. And uh, I had a visitation from an angel. And when the angel of the Lord came in, he said, you have to preach repentance. And so I'm just being obedient to the word of the Lord and preaching to you repentance. And let me tell you how, how, how important this is. In Mark chapter one, when you get around verse 15, 16 and following, Jesus' first message to prepare people for the move of the Father 
was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why is repentance important? Because it brings heaven within your reach. And so maybe you have already repented of your sins and you've become a believer in Jesus, but repentance is an ongoing experience. So I keep changing my mind and my way of life as I receive progressive revelation from the word of God. We know this is true because in the book of Hebrews chapter six, it talks about the word of the beginning of Christ. I'm giving it to you in the Greek. This is where Christ begins in your life. Okay, and it says the first doctrine, which means this is how we shall live, is repentance from dead works. And so the first thing that I want to share with you in preparation for a move of God, a fresh new move of God in your life, is to emphasize that the Father wants you to practice repentance. So we know that that's the word of the Lord. The second thing Jesus said was this, Practice right living every day. And so we know that in 1 John chapter 2, this is what the, uh, the, uh, the apostle says. He says, now, if you know that Jesus is righteous, you know everyone that practices righteousness is born of Jesus. And in chapter 3, uh, around verse 7, it says this, let no one deceive you. He that practices righteousness is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. And so the Bible is very clear that the righteous Lord loves righteousness. And the apostle Peter said, we look forward to a new heavens and a new earth wherein there's righteousness. And Jesus says in Matthew's gospel that to the right will be the sheep, the, the sons and daughters of the father. And he said that the father will say to the righteous, come and inherit the kingdom. Jesus said, come and inherit the kingdom of my father. And so you know that in Jesus' teaching, in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, to come under the dominion of God and his what? Righteousness. And so we know that that's a biblical revelation. And in connection with righteousness, let me tell you the second thing the angel said to me after talking to me about preaching repentance. He said, you have to preach holiness. And if you'll remember in first Peter, that very first chapter, he said, listen, he who has called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of life. Why? Because the Lord speaks in the book of Leviticus and he says, I, the Lord, your God am holy. So be holy for I'm holy. And then in the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews, this is what the word of the Lord says. It's, he says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man will see the Lord. And so when you look at the old, old covenant, God says to the priest, holiness unto the Lord. And so it is very important that we be holy, because even in the book of the prophet Isaiah, it says a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. So if I want to please the Lord, if I want to participate in this last day move of God's spirit. If I want to enter into this new realm of glory, I've got to practice repentance in my private life, and I've got to practice right living every day, which means to be holy. The third thing Jesus said was this, I want you to develop intimacy with me. Now, let's see if this part of the revelation is clear and biblical and scriptural. Well, in 2 Peter 3 and 18, this is what the word of the Lord says but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, this is more than just information. This is the intimate knowledge of Jesus. This means I am to know Jesus intimately and deeply. So this is the word of the Lord. So in addition to that, you have the Apostle Paul, who says in the book of Philippians 3 and 10, he says that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, be conformed to his death. And so it's about knowing God. And one of the ways we can test whether we know God is if we read 1 John chapter 2, and this is what it says. It says, by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He goes on to say, he who says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar 
and the word or the truth is not in him. And then it goes on to say, but whoever keeps the word of the Lord, in him, the word of God, the love of God is perfected. And by this, we can know that we are in him. When it says, uh, whoever uh, uh, keeps the word of the Lord, the love of God in him or in her is perfected. In the Greek, it means it's running its full course. So in other words, when I practice repentance from dead works, when I practice right living every day, when I am holy according to the word of the Lord, when I develop my intimacy with the Father through Jesus Christ, when that happens, the love of God, because Jesus said this, if, and you can read this in John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, because I want you to, I want to refer you to the scriptures and I want you to read the word of the Lord. Jesus would say things like this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my commandments. And he said, there will be this special love that the father has for that individual. And then Jesus said, and we will come and we will live with you. So I'm talking about a coming move of the glory of God into your life. And a major key is just simply loving God, loving God. In connection with this, allow me to share something that happened to me. In 1989, I had an experience. It was actually quite a surprise. Four o'clock in the morning, month of December, an angel comes to me. Uh, He looked to be about 20 or 30 years of age, had dark hair, looked like kind of black hair, very handsome being, uh, white robe. And the next day I know I'm out of my body and I'm speeding through the heavens. The Apostle Paul referred to something like this when he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And he said, I know a man in Christ who about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, I do not know, but such a one was caught up to paradise and saw things. And so the next thing I know, I'm speeding through the heavens and that I land in heaven. And then, you know, Isaiah talks about in Isaiah chapter six, He says that there was this temple and the Lord was there. And in the book of Revelation, it talks about this heavenly tabernacle. And so I'm standing before this heavenly temple in heaven and the angel is standing in front of me. And instantly I knew that I had an appointment with God. And so nobody had to tell me instantly I knew and I saw a door, but and and the door was closed, but I knew that it would open by appointment. The angel that's standing in front of me, he walks through the door and I know I'm supposed to follow him. And when I follow him, I see the glory of God. I see the father um, in a bright, bright light. I could not make out any of the features of the father. Trust me, I tried, but it was impossible for me to do so because of the brightness of the light and because of the cloud. Many people go through life wishing they could understand the realm of the spirit and the warfare that goes on behind the scenes. In his brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, Dr. Kevin Zadai helps you to develop your ability to engage the enemy on every level. Kevin's brand new study guide and three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1, will help equip you to learn to recognize God's direction for your life, Encounter clarity in knowing God's battle strategies against your enemies. Exercise your authority as a believer. Walk in increased discernment through the Holy Spirit's power. And much, much more. In this exclusive offer, Kevin also prays impartation prayers on each CD to help you in your advance against the enemy. Order today Kevin's brand new study guide and exclusive three CD set, The Notes of a Warrior, Volume 1. For a donation of $29, U.S. shipping and handling included. To order, call 888-340-1460 with offer code 1002 or go online to kevinzadai.com slash offer. It's time to stand up for your rights as a Christian and give the devil a headache. Isaiah 6, uh, Isaiah talks about the smoke, okay? And so we try to find different words to express 
um, heavily experienced with the Father. And so here is the glory. And so then the next thing I know is I have a sense that I should turn to my left. When I turn to my left, there is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what is the purpose of this experience? Well, the father, the first thing the father says to me is, he says, take notes and learn. Okay, so now I know why I'm here, <laughs> okay? And then he begins to quote 1 Peter 4, 17, and this is what he says. Now the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. But if you go and you look up the word judgment, it has to do with measurement. So now here's the question, what is being measured? Well, the great commandment in Deuteronomy and the great commandment in Matthew 22, referring back now to Jesus' teaching, is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And what I'm saying to you is that loving the Father in Jesus is the foundation for the coming move of God and for the greater manifestation of his presence, power, and glory. Then Jesus said, you will love your neighbor as yourself. Later on, Jesus in his teaching says, in the very same way that I've loved you, love one another. And so when we do this word, we're actually practicing repentance. We're practicing right living and we're developing this intimacy with God. And so like Jesus said, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. My father who loves everyone will have a special love for this one who's obeying my commandments. And the father and I will come and we will uh, manifest ourselves. The father is saying, I'm going to manifest myself in your life. Jesus is saying, I'm going to manifest myself in your life simply because you do what I'm saying. Jesus said, listen, you call me Lord and master, and that's what you should call me, for so I am. But he said, listen, follow my example. And so when we're talking about stepping into the glory, we're talking about following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to be prepared. I want you to get your heart prepared. I want you to get your mind prepared. I want you to get your life prepared for this coming move of God's spirit. And the best way to get prepared is to lay the proper foundation. Remember, Hebrews 6 says, number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith toward God. And coming back to Mark chapter one, uh, verse 15 and 16, Jesus says, listen, the kingdom of heaven, heaven is literally within your reach, but I've got to have you do two things first. Number one, I've got to have you repent. And number two, I have to have you believe this good news. So I've got good news for you. You're getting ready to see a move of God on the earth, the likes of which has never been seen before. And the father wants you to participate as a son and as a daughter in this tremendous move of the Holy Spirit. But you know, it's like anything else. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to get ready. And so I'm in the process of getting ready. I want to urge you to get ready because I want to see the miraculous Jesus manifest himself, not just in my life, but in the lives of others. And when I talk about things like this, let me give you an example of what I mean. Jesus said in John's gospel, he said, when he, the spirit of truth has come, right? He's not going to speak from himself, but whatever the father tells him, whatever I tell the spirit of truth, he's going to tell you, he's going to remind you, he's going to show it to you. And then Jesus said these words, he said, he's going to show you things to come. So what do I mean when I say that? Well, one night I go to bed and I have a dream. And in the dream, I see a woman and there's a scripture and the scripture is Luke chapter one, verse 37. I'm talking about the realm of the miraculous. I'm talking about a coming glory. I'm talking about manifestations of the G of Jesus and the father through repentance, through faith, through right living, through holiness, through developing intimacy with God. Remember what Jesus said now in John 17, he said, this is eternal life that they may know you and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And so I have this dream about this woman. I see her 
Years later, she has cancer. She doesn't tell me she has cancer. I walk up to her and this is what I say. Go back and have another examination because what they told you they found, they will not find it again. She goes back, has an examination, and the cancer is gone. And it's still gone years later. In fact, the the church that I founded, her and her husband are now the leaders there. So when I talk to you about the supernatural presence and power of God and the coming glory, this is what I'm referring to. Let me just give you another example. I was just recently in California and uh, a, a woman walks up to me and uh, the Lord Jesus starts talking to me and and uh, he begins to tell me that this woman had, uh, let's say it like this, she had gender uh, issues. And so I bring this up to her and she says, yes, it's true. And then the Lord Jesus tells me that she had had problems with rejection and she had problems with self-rejection. She had problems with self-hatred. She had problems with depression and she had, um, uh, I think, an issue with uh, suicidality. Um, what happens is, is her mother had brought her to church. And when her mother had brought her to church, it was because the woman had a growth under her left uh, arm and it was cancer. So we pray for her because Jesus said this. He said, whatever you ask the father in my name, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give it to you. So we pray for her and I ask her to go to the restroom. Power of God touches her. She goes to the restroom. The growth has shrunk by half. Well, this was on a Sunday. On Monday, they were going to check her about the cancer. They had already diagnosed her with cancer. She goes back to the doctor on Monday. Now I get a text and a phone call. Okay. She goes back to the doctor and she, and the doctor says, we are 99.9% sure that you're cancer free. She comes to the pastor. She comes to the church. She gives her testimony. I'm talking to you about a present and an increase and a coming glory that will be in your life where you will reveal Jesus to people, where people can experience Jesus through your life and ministry. And it's a very simple process to follow. One, repentance from dead works. Two, the practice of right living every day or holiness. Three, developing intimacy with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we can do these three things, and here's what's interesting. When Jesus said this to this woman, because I was her pastor, I was her teacher, I was her mentor. You know what Jesus said? This, this is what he said. He said, will you do this? In other words, revelation demands the right response. I want to say that again. Revelation demands the right response. When she says yes, Jesus puts his hand on her because he is the great high priest. He ever lives to make intercession for you. He stands right there at the right hand of the Father to pray for you. And he prays for her to the Father. Then this is what the woman said. Jesus walked up to someone else and he brought up the same three things. And then there was another person that Jesus walked up to and he just smiled. And so I want to say this to you. If you will practice these three things, you will put a smile on the face of, face of Jesus and you will bring joy and gladness to the heart of the Father. I just want to let you know that there is coming a move of God that is unprecedented to the nations, to your life to your ministry, but like everything else, we have to get prepared for it. And so I just want to mention these things to you. In addition to one more thing, because this is you and I's first session on the realm, the, uh, the realm of the miraculous. I want to remind you of the Azusa Street Revival. 
And in the, in the Azusa Street Revival, there was a prophecy given about the great Pentecostal movement. And this is what was said, the Pentecostal movement. It said that in the great Pentecostal movement, three things are going to happen. Number one, the people will praise a God they no longer pray to. I know that praise is biblical, right? Because in the Hebrew songbook, the book of Psalms, it says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. The prophet says, Lord, I praise you with all my heart. The prophet says, I praise you with joyful lips. All throughout the scriptures, it says, praise the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. And the Bible says, let us come and offer the sacrifice of praise. So praise is biblical, praise is scriptural, and praise is to be practiced. But this is what's interesting. When you read Paul's instruction to Timothy, and I know we call 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus pastoral letters, um, and that's true, but I consider them to be apostolic letters to set the church of Jesus Christ in order. This is what Paul says. He says, first of all, prayers, supplications, petitions, intercessions, and then giving of thanks. But he says, first of all, prayer. And so I want to emphasize that after repentance, after the practice of righteousness and holiness, you're going to have to pray to develop this intimacy with the Father and with Jesus Christ. Remember remember what Paul said? Paul said, God is faithful. He's called you to the fellowship of the Son, Jesus Christ. I want you to read the whole book of 1 John. And this because this is what it says. He says, I wrote these things to you, okay? The things which I've seen and heard, we declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And we're called to have fellowship with God so that you can have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Well, prayer is my means of having fellowship with the Father and fellowship with Jesus. And so I want to begin to talk to you about prayer. Because see, here's, here's, when you're looking at 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says this, and I want you to read the whole chapter. He says, I'll pray with my understanding. And he says, I will pray with the Holy Spirit. When I pr- pray with my understanding, I am talking with the Father about what I think I need to talk about. But then Paul says, I'll pray with the Holy Spirit. When I'm praying with the Holy Spirit, I'm in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and I am praying with the Holy Spirit about what the Holy Spirit wants me to talk to the Father about in Jesus' name. Now, in our next session, we're going to continue this teaching, but allow me to give you one more scriptural reference. And it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14 where the Apostle Paul says, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus, that's the presence of God and the power of God, may the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The fellowship, the fellowship, the koinonia, the intimacy of the Spirit, the partnership of the Spirit, the closeness of the Spirit, the communion of the Spirit be with you. So when I pray with my understanding, I am praying what I think, okay? which may or may not be the will of God. But when I pray with God, the Holy Spirit, to the Father in the name of God, the Son, Jesus, I am praying the will of God. And it's a prayer that the Father is surely going to answer. And so I just want to say this to you, and I want to remind you of Romans 8. This is what Paul says. He says, you have a weakness. And he says, the Holy Spirit, I'm giving it to you in the Greek, takes hold with your weakness, right? Your weakness is you don't know what to praise you all. But the Holy Spirit who prays through you with with groans and utterances, he knows what the will of God is and he prays the will of God for you. Let me leave this last thought for you. When you pray with your understanding, you pray behind the problem. What if I said you could pray in the Holy Spirit and you could pray ahead of the problem and stop the problem? and bring heaven into earth like never before. 
I'm talking to you about the power of prayer and this present and coming glory that comes as we cooperate with the Spirit, as we fellowship with the Spirit, and as we walk in the ways of the Spirit. Get ready. The Father's getting ready to do something, and he wants you as a son and as a daughter to participate in what he's getting ready to do. So prepare your heart. There's a glory coming into your life, and there's an increase of glory coming. Get ready for it in Jesus' name.